Started. Three, three minute rounds of world championship semi final boxing. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Gets underway. Arsenal Started from the bottom, now my whole team fucking here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Weekly of Ireland in blue. Just watch for the power of the Russian. He'll be looking to stop this early, as he has done in three other bouts. Well, Jason Quigley has had a late start in this competition. Very slow. We've not seen the usual power and skill and technical ability that we know is available to him. He's one of the most mobile fighters at this weight. Very fast, very light indeed. But Artem Shebotarov in the first preliminary, a TKO. Walk the second one, incredibly easy. Then another two TKOs. So a big hitter. He'll be looking to put power into the shots. Where his difficulty will lie here tonight against Quigley is the mobility of the Irishman. And you can see absolutely fluid movement on the outskirts of the ring from Quigley. And as I said, he's had a slow start, but getting up to speed now. And provided he doesn't present a sitting target for the Russian, well, Shevatarov will have his work cut out at this semi final level. Right now, it's exactly uh, as we thought this would be. Quigley moves around, elusive Chebatarev stalking his man, waiting to get him in a corner and start pummeling him, using that incredible power he's got. Good exchange there from Quigley. The left went upstairs, the right went downstairs, back upstairs with the left. So we're seeing a better range of shots from Quigley, but he's got to keep on his toes because <laughs> if Shebatarov gets him in the cross wires, well, we know he's going to unload some pretty heavy shots here. Good uppercut there from the Russian. Big right hand from the Russian as well. Shevatarov headhunting here, looking for an early stoppage. Good hands from Irish fighter quickly. Well, quickly trying to play his man inside, pulling him on, trying to cut that left hand out of the uh, state of play. But of course, the Russian tagging him with the right. So that's it, the final few seconds, the bell's about to go. Oh, and a good exchange right on the bell there. Quigley catching the Russian. So, the elusive style of Quigley counter-punching there. Certainly looked impressive, though uh, the Russian Shevatarov very aggressive. Just look at the potential power that Shevatarov can bring to this. Skill of Quigley, he spoilt a lot of that work that the Russians brought inside brought up his arms, covered up well, moved. Well, this is how they saw it, the judges. 10-9 to Shevatarov for Judge B. The other two judges saw it in favor of Quigley. This is a tight bout, but Quigley's counter-punching and movement right now has got him the lead. So they're back up for uh, round number two. Two three-minute rounds left in this men's middleweight sub-75 kilo class. Shevatarov of Russia in red, Quigley of Ireland in blue. Good connection there from Shevatarov. Goes for the midsection, lands the shot. Great left there from Quigley and a right. Good solid connections against the Russian. And the strategy of Shevatarov to just try and stop his man may not work for him here because faster hands from Quigley, greater mobility working for him. Good left from Quigley. Right as well and slips the Russian. Well, for all the TKO talk that Shevatarov has brought to this tournament, 
Quigley getting up to speed here and landing some clean shots on some very good target areas. Looking confident on his toes. This is looking like a good exhibition from the Irishman. Good right hand. Oh, a cracking right hand there from the Irishman. The Russian ducking his head down in, trying to get inside Quigley's long reach. And he's getting caught. Just a little slip there between the ropes. Uh, the referee, no standing aid, just uh, touches his gloves for a second. We still have a minute and a half of this second round. Well, Cliff Quigley has managed to land some very clean shots. And he's tested the chin of the Russian, just as he did there. It's that overhand right. The Russian drops his left hand, and Quigley manages to find a way in. And it's on target, and that's so important, because this could be a stoppage bout. his toes quickly trying to demonstrate to the judges and the crowd in attendance here that he's in control keep your head up says the referee to quickly 50 seconds left of this second round and the Russian starting to make a little bit of headway here after struggling in the first minute and a half oh my goodness me and he's claiming he just slipped over, but he's getting a standing eight. The Russian made connection for sure, and that's a fair call. Now, the judges won't necessarily take a point off for that, but they will certainly take it into consideration. The Russian now smells some blood, but he gets a big right hand for his troubles. Quigley's composed himself very quickly. It did tag him the punch. He did look a bit unsteady on his legs, but he's composed, he's come back, and he's starting to put pressure back on the Russian. A good left hand there. The Russian throwing caution to the wind coming in, almost without a care. Quigley capitalizing. Great left-right-left -right -left combination. At the end of the round, very strong again for Quigley. Well, Quigley, for uh, at least two minutes in that round, was uh, all dominant, but the Russian... He had a great spell near the end there, and of course tagging him as he did, getting a standing eight count. And that's earlier on in the round, Will. Well, we might get a chance just to see what happened there. The Irishman said it was a slip. Well, you know it was actually, looking at that, he just tripped over his heel, didn't he? Uh, there was a slight bit of contact there, and that was a tough call on the Irishman. Let's see how the judges see it. They've all given it in favor of Quigley. They too thought it was a bit of a trip, and I think that's a great decision there by the judges. 18-20, 19 each, and 18-20. So one judge right now has them even. We go in to the final round then. Jason Quigley of Ireland right now has the advantage over the hard-hitting Russian, Artem Shevatorov of Russia in red. Final round to get through to the men's middleweight final. Well, I think the scoring of the last round is a brilliant demonstration of just how transparent the new scoring system is that Aiba have employed. Absolutely brilliant there that Quigley run the round, but we go into a fierce concert here, contest here in the third. It's really getting intense in there. Anything you can do, I can do better, says Quigley. He's no longer using movement, which is the number one thing in his arsenal. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Russian. And uh, could that be dangerous tactics? He's got a lead. And uh, there was a little bit of head contact there. And I wonder whether the Russian has just had a bit of a cut. Uh, the referee is checking him over. You can't see it right now. He's just having a glance at him. Brings them back together. Two minutes 20 of round three to go. Psychologically, the advantage of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a strong hitter sends the message out, I've dominated this fight. I've got to the stage now where I can match you on equal terms and that is a psychological advantage in the mindset of Quigley to go toe to toe with the Russian and say to him I'll beat you on your terms as well if I have to and look at Quigley now just coming in powering the shot and really push the head says the referee a little the clash, yeah. both sides at fault there brilliant strategy from Jason Quigley first round he kept out of trouble caused the Russian to work hard second round he started to balance things up in terms 
of his retaliatory response. Third round, they're head to head. Well, that little pause there is because uh, a little blood coming from the Russian's nose. The referee wiped it away. We're underway again. And uh, once again, they're right in the middle, toe to toe. This is great action in round three. Less than a minute and a half to go. Well, halfway through this round, Quigley will want to demonstrate his technical prowess. So on his toes again, but the referee calling for the doctor this time to look at a cut just above the Russian's left eye. So centre and neutral corner, Jason Quigley. He's actually got some blood on his arm and on his chin there, but uh, it's not his own. The Russian now uh, trickling blood out of his nose. The doctor just checking it over, dabbing it down, making sure he can continue, which of course he can. There's no blood coming into his eyes. One minute and 17, we're underway again. Now, quickly, excuse the pun, but is he smelling blood here? Is he going for a big victory here now that the Russian is injured? Referee again calling the injudicious use of heads here into play. But uh, Quigley pulling forward and on the inside, really thundering in and landing big right hands. Referee not happy there. Yeah, once again, sent to a neutral corner, Jason Quigley. And uh, the judge, or rather the uh, doctor and referee, just glancing at that nose. Nobody else allowed to get involved during the actual round as uh, corner men uh, will be nervous about that. Oh, and a big right hand from Quigley, right on the nose. Well, Quigley's made his mind up. The last minute of this third and final round will all be about power. He wants to send a clear message to possibly his opponent in the final that he'll fight you on any terms. On his toes now, showing the judge and the attending crowd here that high level of boxing skill. Well, just uh, 15 seconds to go here. And Quigley pushing forward now. Everything has swung around. The Irishman's had a cracking fight. He takes a headbutt to the nose, though. And uh, the Russian being a little dangerous with his head there. Great right hand on the way in. And a left, punishing the Russian here now. Oh. What a magnificent fight we have witnessed. The Irishman drops to his knees. Absolutely ecstatic with his performance, and so he should be. He's found his feet. He started slowly in the tournament, but look at this. Standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the biggest slugger in the whole tournament. Solid connections there. Every punch bang on target. And even though the Russian came in hard, look at Quigley, lands on the temple, lands on the jaw, again lands on the sweet spot, and pushes this man who's got a three TKO record in this tournament right on the back foot. Now we go over to the referee to get our final scores. Well, will Artem Chebatorev get the birthday gift that he wants? He turns 25 tomorrow. I'm afraid it isn't. It goes in favor of Jason Quigley, as we expected. All three judges score it in favor of Quigley. Three and oh, the Irishman is on fire. And uh, after a tough day two days ago in the quarterfinals for Ireland, Jason Quigley is on to the final. Yeah, it was amazing, like, you know, if you, this Russian, I, I wasn't fooled by this Russian coming in here. He's already after winning four fights in the championship. He, he knocked out the world number one, and he had three TKOs. So he stopped three guys, yeah. so I wasn't fooled by him coming in here. But watch Jason, he's on the back foot here, and he's just moving around. Why? It takes tremendous strength to do that. I'm talking about mental strength, not panic, not jump in. He's sticking to his game plan, he believes in what he's doing. And it's very, very hard to do that, especially when it's the Russian bleeding down their throat. And here's the third round now. Jason actually changed his tactics. Look, he meets the Russian head on. And you know what he does? He outpowers him here. Watch these big shots coming in. And Jason is keeping the head very, very low, which I like. He's putting his chin in his chest, so he's not going to get any injuries. Look at these big, big left hooks, big right hooks going in. And Jason could have rested on his laurels. He was two rounds up. He could have rested on his laurels and moved around nice and easy. But not Jason Quigley. You know, he likes an out here of himself. And he went in and he won in a great fashion in the end. 
And I suppose one of the keys, Katie, as you know, is to <coughs> keep it on the tournament. On the world stage, well, Andy Fowler's withdrawal from the middleweight competition meant Kazakhstan fighter Danny Beg Alim Karnuli had a day off as he made it through to a final. The man in the opposite corner in the final was Ireland's Jason Quickly, who since joining the senior ranks 18 months ago has now amassed 32 consecutive wins, including the European title back in June. Victory number 32 came in the semi finals when he beat Russia's Artem Chepatorev which ensured Ireland had their first ever World Championship finalist. Leon Mann caught up with him after making it to the gold medal bout. Put it into words what it means to get into that final. I can't put it into words. That's been my dream from day one since I started boxing. To, to get to a World Championships was a dream for me. To be the national champion was a dream for me. To get here, everything's a bonus. I'm taking it in my stride and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Looking into the final, your opponent had his feet on today. It doesn't matter, as I says, it doesn't matter if I don't have a 12 round fight today. I'm going to be mentally and physically prepared tomorrow for anybody. Okay, let's see then how he, Jason, got on when he faced home crowd favourite Kazakhstan Zan. the second round, Jason Quickly, the reigning European champion, taking on Janibek Alim Connolly, the reigning Asian champion. In this, the 75 kilogram middleweight final, a gold medal at stake here at the World Championships in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Hard punches being exchanged by both boxes. Good counter, left, right from Quigley, and another right hand. He had the better of that brief exchange. You see, Quigley's definitely better when his opponent's coming towards him. Counter punching luck is in and out, which is good. You've got to make the opponent come over the front foot. He may have to use um, a couple of feints here to trigger that to trigger that attack by his opponent and then to go back at him. But he's also targeted the body quickly, which is not too bad at all. He's got a good right hand to the body. He's got to then switch with that left hook to the head. Jason Quigley, just past the halfway stage, he's going to have to come back with some offense of his own and immediately does so with a hard left dug into the ribcage of Alan Carnley. Right cross penetrates the guard of the man from Kazakhstan. Nutritional contest for both of these boxers. But that shows you just how much top spot on the podium means. Oh, beautiful shots waiting in. The uppercut from Quigley was a beauty. And again, just going at it and seeing who can give and take the most. Both fighters now feel both boxers now feeling the pace. Hard swinging exchange at centre ring once more. Inside the final minute. What do you make of that? Frankly, I don't know what you were whispering about then, but you know, as far as he was concerned. Uh, he, he, he came back brilliantly well, despite hitting the canvas two minutes in. Yeah, that's what I was saying to him, and he got all his grip determination. So, just the way he was at the end, and he's in the field, I, I, I was really into fighters on the interviews a lot. He's a really likeable guy, and I think he's going to get a lot of fans from that. He's got a, a pro style, I think, myself. And so he's going to be fan-friendly. I think he's got a big, big future ahead of him. Yeah, he's made huge improvements uh, in the last couple of years. You know all about him. Yeah. You've fought him twice. Yeah, we've boxed a couple of times. We all win over each other. Um, second one, Chris, he uh, disputed. But I know he's... <laughs> You've got that one. Yeah, I'm not into it too. But I know he's... But I know he's, he's a top kid, Jason. He's, um, he, he fought his heart out well, Frank, he said. And, I mean, that was more of a flash knockdown. Yeah, it was. Yeah. The defeat was in the wrong place. Yeah. The kind of went down. But he got up in the show. It takes a lot of bottles, takes a lot of heart to get up and, and, and perform so, you know, valiantly over the next two and a half rounds. I thought he did really well and he's young, he can kill come again. I think him and Anthony Fowler will have a nice few.
Paddy Barnes, Paul Griffin, John John Evan, and Jason Quigley stepping onto the top spoke of the podium. What a day for him. Only 22, and he looks younger in his moment of pride. Joe Hennigan is the manager of this Irish team, and he'll be delighted with that. He's a Connacht man, a Mayo man, there was another uh, Connacht man, another Mayo man in fact, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who was the manager of the Irish in 1992 in Barcelona, when famously they won the gold and the silver with Mercedes Dowley, or uh, Carruth, sorry Nick, uh, Carruth and Wayne McCullough. Isn't it worth having black eyes, Jason? I think it is. Here it is. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team fucking here. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here, nigga. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team here, nigga. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team fucking here. I done kept it real from the jump. Living at my mama house, we'd argue every month, nigga. I was trying to get it on my own. Working all night, traffic on. 
on the way home and my uncle calling me like where you at i gave you the keys so you bring it right back nigga i just think it's funny how it goes now i'm on the road half a million for a show and we started from the bottom now we're here started from the bottom now my 